Welcome to the session on what's next for Drupal.org. Um, if you're in the wrong room, I won't take offense if you leave, because, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. of course you're in the right room, right? Yeah, Drupal.org. So, my name is Webchick. Um, I work for Acqui in the office of the CTO, uh, where I basically get paid full time to work on important community stuff for Drupal, which is a pretty sweet gig. Um, I'm a Drupal Association board member. I'm actually a founding member of the Drupal Association, and I've been on the board since 2007. Um, and I'm the author of Using Drupal, which is going to be out in stores in a month or so. So go get the early release copy, yay. Okay, so first, I wanna give an update on what's happened in the past year, because I think a lot of people don't realize that there's actually been a lot of stuff happening on Drupal.org, and they maybe come out in little spurts, and so they're not really noticed, but I wanted to first talk about some of our wins in the last year, and also credit some folks who helped with that. So, Git migration, yay! <laughs> Plus one subscribe, yay! We now have an actual means of making API change notices that is not editing a freaking documentation page that's this long, yay! Uh, there's a little toolbar so that you don't have to know HTML to help out with documentation and anybody at all on Drupal.org can upload an image and put it in their post. Pictures in your posts. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Issue summaries. We now have a solution, in air quotes, for the situation where there are 300 comments in an issue and you walk in and you're like, I have no idea what's going on and I don't have time to read that. We take it issue summary initiative. Somebody comes along, they summarize it. So the first post in an issue is usually the summary so you only have to read one thing instead of 300 things. Yay! Uh, the documentation team did a bunch of work to actually turn on the community in community documentation. So actually make it much more obvious to people that our community documentation is wiki, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you can edit it, and you should edit it, and these are the people who have edited it, and all that kind of stuff. So give it up. Uh, we launched uh, improved distribution tools on Drupal.org just like two weeks ago or so. Um, so in the past, all of the successful distributions that you've actually heard of, like Pressflow and OpenAtrium and all of these, uh, were all hosted off of Drupal.org because they couldn't do things like put dev releases in, or add a patch, or add an external library of some kind, or any of that kind of stuff. Anything that actually makes distributions useful, basically. So. All of those restrictions have now been lifted. You can include any external GPL library in your distribution, that, as long as it's on our whitelist and there's a process for that. So external libraries, patches, dev releases, you can reference Git clones of specific branches or specific revisions. Basically, anything that ever sucked about our distribution tools has been fixed. Yeah! <laughs> And then finally, I don't know if people have noticed this, but api.drupal.org has gotten kind of awesome. Like, it supports uh, full class hierarchies and browsing object-oriented code. Uh, it actually, like, in addition to knowing where functions were called, it also knows where hooks were called and where theme functions were called. So, like, you can look up a function like theme breadcrumb and it can show you all the places where theme breadcrumb are called. Um, you can look up all the implementations of a hook in core and gazillions of other stuff. And as a testament to this work, Views module now hosts on api.drupal.org instead of its own separate infrastructure, which is awesome. So give it up. Uh, and finally, another thing process-wise, I don't know if we want to cheer for this, but this is really important process-wise. Um, Neil Drum has done a bunch of stuff to set up uh, a process for getting a Drupal.org development sandbox. So if you have an idea of you want to make Drupal.org awesome, there's a process you can go through. You can get basically a clone of Drupal.org. It's sanitized so you can't like steal people's passwords and stuff. Um, so you can get a clone of Drupal.org, hack away on it so it does the feature that you want, and then get people to look at it and collaborate on it and this kind of stuff. And just about all of those improvements I just showed you were done through this process. So it's really great that this exists. Yay! And then finally, we have documentation on how all of this works. Yeah! All right, so please give a hand, and this is only some of the people, I'm sorry I didn't have time to get everyone's faces, but this is some of the people who have made this possible, and let's give it up for them, okay?
All right. But none of you came to hear about this crap. I just want us to feel light and fluffy. Okay. So what we want to talk about is actually the plan for this year on Drupal.org, right? So I want to preface this with a couple of caveats. I have no idea what I'm doing, okay? I don't know my Jenkins from my Hudson, from my Puppet, I don't know, all those crazy things. But what I do know is that we have an amazing infrastructure team, we have an amazing community of web developers, and things were broken process-wise and stuff wasn't happening, and so I basically saw a need and I jumped in to try and fill it. This is not the penultimate plan of the Drupal Association mission for the rest of life. This is basically something for the next six months to get us through, get some major changes done, and so we can have a platform from which to do even more things, okay? So please don't hit me, because I'm very sensitive, okay. Um, so this year, the Drupal Association put as, uh, it has six major initiatives. Two of them are make Drupal.org awesome, which is great, for site builders and developers, which is a pretty cool mission, right? I mean, if anybody should be in charge of Drupal.org, if anybody is, um, the DA should certainly have an ownership stake in that and should certainly take responsibility a lot more than it has in the past. I think most people would agree about that. Um, so site builders and developers, what that also means is there's an unspecified third tier here, which means we need to make Drupal.org awesome for our sponsors as well, so they can help fund the things that we want to see happen, okay? So we have to make it nice for the construction hats, the nerd glasses, and the fancy ties. So what does that actually mean, you know? Like, Dad, that's a nice platitude, like make Drupal.org awesome for these people. What does that actually mean? So I had no idea. So what I did is I started having a lot of conversations with people. And so I talked to these folks, meaning the community. I put up a voting tool, and yes, it's not on Drupal, and sorry. But, you know, it worked for just banging out a couple of things to try and get a sense, a general sense, of what like, our insider contributor community thought was important. Because obviously, pr pr you know, protecting the needs of the insider community is, is extremely important. They're the people who actually make Drupal.org happen. Um, I also interviewed uh, almost all of these folks. These are the folks, uh, this, this org chart sort of thing, are the folks that actually do the work on Drupal.org. So there's people who are in charge of project module, people who are in charge of the Git, migra the Git structure, people who are in charge of like solar, general infrastructure, this kind of thing. These are all the people who know everything about how our website works. Um, I talked to a bunch of them to find out what they thought was important and what they felt would be good to do. And I also talked to these folks. Um, this is Jacob Redding and Megan Seneke from the Drupal Association who do a lot of business wrangly things because I certainly don't know what businesses want and they have a better idea of that. To try and like take all of this input and like stir it up into like a big soup, okay? A soup of delicious Drupal-y goodness, I don't know, okay. So here were some common trends that came out of that. The first trend that was loud and clear was there are like critical things that basically everyone is in agreement that we have to do, but they're stalled out. Either because there was a community initiative around it and it got killed because nobody cared, or there isn't a community initiative around it and there really never can be because it's so big and so daunting that the community can never take care of it. But one way or the other, there's like big things that we know have to get done and aren't doing it. Plus one subscribe is a good example of this, right? Like, we knew for seven years at least that that was like a critical community performance issue. But because we couldn't get our act together and raise a peasly little 7,000 bucks until last year, um, it never got fixed. So looking for more opportunities like that of fixing the really obvious things that help improve the performance of the community. The second big point that came out loud and clear um, was that there are community-driven and Drupal.org initiatives. I mean, we did a huge push on this like, towards the end of last year to try and get, um, you know, like people involved. Because we're like, before that, we were like, like, we're a community of web developers who can't make changes to our own effing website. Okay? <laughs> Think about that for a minute. So we did a whole bunch of work to make these processes and documentation and sandboxes and all this kind of stuff. But yet, because there was nobody whose job it was to just kind of like stay on top of those things, and there's literally like 17 issue queues that this stuff lives in, it's really hard to keep track of everything. But they were like happening, they were going through the process, and then they were just sitting there dying on the vine. And that was terrible because it destroys volunteer morale, it, it, it blocks our community, and it's so hard to build up momentum once it's destroyed like that. And so we want to make sure that doesn't happen again. The third point is that Drupal.org's bus factor, that, that is effing scary. I love all these people dearly, but basically no one of those people has any idea how the entire thing works. 
They all know their little pieces that they get, and there's some people with more general knowledge than others, but it's a really scary situation because if anything happens to these people, you know, hopefully nothing violent or anything like that, but just they get, they decide to get a girlfriend or, no, I'm just kidding, but, <laughs> but you know, and they start doing something else, we're, we're in a precarious position. And a lot of them, you know, they were really passionate about this stuff a couple of years ago, and now they sort of stay on because they feel very obligated, because it's like a moral obligation for them, they really care about the community, but they have other interests in life, you know? They want to be playing bongo drums in Brazil, or they want to be helping, you know, Occupy Wall Street take over the world or whatever. Um, so our bus factor is really bad, and we need to fix that problem. Um, the, the fourth thing came out loud and clear, and I was actually surprised about this because I, I, I just assumed like, you know, this would be stuff that like, I would care about since I'm the Drupal 7 maintainer, but nobody else would really care about. But everybody across the board said Drupal.org has to be on Drupal 7. The business people said it because they said it's absolutely stupid that I get into a meeting with a client and I tell them to use Drupal 7 and they say, your own effing website doesn't use Drupal 7, why should we? I heard it from the developers who really want uh, the kind of capabilities that a redesigned project module built on modern tools would give them. And I heard it from site builders who want to you know, benefit from those capabilities as well. So everybody thinks we need to be on Drupal 7. And this is one of those areas where it's not like a bunch of people tomorrow at the code sprint are just going to sit around at a table and make that happen, right? This is something that needs strong leadership. I mean, maybe. Guys, impress me. See what you can do tomorrow. That would be great. <laughs> However, probably we need funding behind that and we need uh, you know, someone to sort of head up organization of that and, and sort of thing. So this is the plan for the next six months. We want to build out a team, we the Drupal Association, I'm wearing my pointy Drupal Association hat now. We want to build out a team that works full time on Drupal.org as opposed to only when there's something emergency happening or as opposed to only something when someone's yelling enough that they're not getting enough attention. We want to build a team that works full-time on Drupal.org on the following three things. One is the big, scary stuff that only the DA can do, okay? And there is a class of problems that's like that. Two is the high-impact, low-hanging fruit stuff. So just dumb stuff like issue, uh, issue summaries or like let people post images. It's like, it's not like that'll take eight months of someone's time. You can probably bang it out in a week or less. Um, and I think we did actually, but, you know, it, but, but having somebody to just bang those things out so we can show a constant stream of improvements and really help people feel like Drupal.org is, I mean, Drupal.org is our infrastructure we use to build our software. It has to be awesome for everybody. Um, and then the third tier of this team's responsibilities is reviewing and deploying community-driven initiatives. So when the documentation team says, we really want to see curated docs happen, we can say, awesome, here's your sandbox. Here's the passwords, whatever you need. Go ahead and do that thing. Ping me when it's ready for review. I will review it and I will schedule it for deployment. As opposed to the current process, which is like, ah, ping Neil, he's around sometimes, maybe, I don't know. So here are some examples of things that fall into these buckets. So big, scary stuff that only the DA can do. Uh, I categorize under those things like the Drupal 7 upgrade. And also things like project ratings and reviews. Um, this is a, a feature request that's been around for seven years. It was the number one most requested change by all of the people on the voting tool. Um, and it's not something that is really well driven to community initiatives because obviously if it was, it would be fixed by now. If something is wanted that badly and hasn't happened, there's a problem there. Um, in terms of high impact, low hanging fruit, I mean things like get blue cheese on groups.drupal.org, which actually just happened last week, so yay! And now a third tier, what I see happening under those things uh, in terms of reviewing and de deploying community improvements are things like make Drupal.org awesome, uh, or sorry, api.drupal.org awesome. So additional features to API module to fill out that site. Um, and also like the case study section, you know, making it so it's not just a sad list of text, you know, referencing sites that probably aren't even on Drupal anymore. So that kind of thing. So, and this is the fourth uh, as, as it write everything down, because right now, almost nothing is written down and it's all in the heads of various people, and so I'm going to be trying to like, make sure that I know what's happening and it's written down and all that kind of stuff. So, here's our team today. Uh, we have Neil Drum, Drum, who is our senior architect. Uh, just within the last week, we've been able to, re we, the Drupal Association, been able to reallocate his time so he's 100% on Drupal.org and community initiatives, as opposed to being the DA's IT guy, which is not really a good fit for him and, you know, is not a good use of his talents. Second, we've hired uh, Captain Intern, who is uh, Tyler Ward, and he is working on a number of different things across Drupal.org. He worked on hosting page improvements, a few other things, more for our business community. 
Um, and then we're hiring, by the way, because what we need is we need a project coordinator for Drupal.org to kind of keep all of these things straight and sort of like, you know, help uh, sort of project manage the whole thing um, without using the term project manage because that's a terrible term. It, but it really is about coordination. It's about coordinating with a bunch of people. It's about setting priorities, that sort of thing. So if that sounds like fun to you, please come talk to me. By 2013, however, we hope to grow this team out more. We have some initial things we need to bang out and we need to get through the other side of. But once those are done, what we really hope to do is clone Tyler. I'm just kidding. No, but hire additional developers to work on Drupal.org full time and also break out our staff with additional resources. For example, a UX lead for Drupal.org. Um, somebody to focus primarily on DevOps, uh, things like that. Not to replace these folks. I want to be absolutely clear. These folks are amazing, and they're the lifeblood of how our community works. We do not want to replace them. What we do want to do is we want to support them in the same way that the Drupal Association supports the Drupal project, by doing all of the stuff that is either hard for them to do, is soul-sucking for them to do, or they just frankly don't have the time. And we're trying to basically fill gaps here. We are not looking to replace anybody. OK? Cool? You guys are quiet. Yay, OK. So yeah, 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 you're going to make a team. So how exactly is this team going to make Drupal.org awesome? What are they going to need to work on? OK. So this is how we read the next few slides, OK? And I think this wasn't very clear in the document that I posted, if anybody saw that. So I'm hoping that this makes things a little bit more clear. So anything I write under big things, those are the primary goals for Q2 and Q3, meaning by DrupalCon Munich, we want to bang out these things, OK? The second column is the small things. And these are examples of things that we could work on. These are actually going to change week over week, so I couldn't even begin to tell you what this is going to be done by Munich, but I'll have another report by then to tell you what we did do. Um, but this will be like the little things that are just hanging out there. They wouldn't take very long to do, and they're stuff that the community found important. Or um, community things, which are things that don't quite fall into that bucket of someone could just bang it out in a day or two. Um, and don't quite fall into that bucket of a soul-sucking problem that everyone universally agrees has to get done, but it's somewhere in the middle. And what that means is that if something like that appeals to you, you can drive it home, you can make the improvement on a sandbox, and we will support you in getting that reviewed and deployed. Okay? So, for site builders, this is an example of a roadmap. Projects, ratings, and reviews is actually a really huge site builder improvement because what we do to people <laughs> is we have say, download Drupal, which is useless out of the box, and then we say, and now if you want to extend it, all you need to do is go into this huge pile of 16,000 modules and find the three or four of them that don't suck. OK? That's terrible, right? And we insiders, we community insiders, we understand what you need to do is you need to look at the commit history and you need to see, oh, that's Merlin a chaos module. That's a good module, but you know, this one's a web chick module, so stay away from that one. You know, like we understand these things. We know like commit history is really important. We know to look at the issue queue and look for a, a long trail of fixed versus active issues. You know, we know all of the signs to look for. But somebody who's just downloading Drupal for the first time has absolutely no idea of that. None. And we all have our internal five star rating of what a module looks like. You know, it's like, oh, views, that's a five star. You know, anything that WebChick touches, that's a one star. Stay away from that. You know, whatever. We all have that, but that is not transparent to our community. It's not at all. So we really need to fix this, and this is a critical issue. Um, it's also something that dovetails nicely with porting Drupal.org to Drupal 7, because that means we're going to be doing project stuff anyway, so you might as well bolt it on. Small things. Um, an improved case studies page. Uh, Lisa Rex is sort of heading that up. It's uh, really good stuff happening there. Um, an improved event listing on groups.drupal.org, so having one place to go to find all of the camps and you know, things like that happening around the world, maybe with a little map, you know, sign up pages, all that kind of stuff. Because the info is all there, but it's just very difficult to find. And if you go to, like, say, wordcamp.org, you know, they got it all pretty looking, and it makes them look like a really healthy, vibrant community, and ours just kind of looks like a disorganized, massive calendar module. So it would be cool if we could sort of improve that for people. Um, and then in terms of community things, you know, the documentation team is about to spearhead an initiative to uh, essentially, like, we have the community initiatives, which are wikis and stuff like that. That's all cool. They also want to spearhead an initiative that's, like, uh, more like top-down curated documentation. So the documentation team saying, these, you know, this is the exact outline and the exact flow and everything else of how, like, an official handbook that is more tightly controlled and only people who, like, you know, 
are, are sort of into the team and know how to speak English natively or, or can you know, work with that, within that framework, sort of prioritize that stuff. So sort of two paths for the community to learn how to do Drupal, or Drupal stuff. And then uh, a better support section, there's a sprint happening on that tomorrow. Um, you know, we had a huge community discussion about whether we ought to not close the forums down and move to Stack Overflow or whether we should at least link to Stack Overflow and that kind of thing. And what my observation has been is that the people who actually help in support on Drupal.org really want the tools to move to Drupal.org. And not only that, but the people, when we surveyed the general community, which includes developers and people who use Stack Overflow today, that also ranked incredibly highly on the list, which was, I, I, I found it surprising and also really encouraging. Because there's a lot of like relatively small changes we can make to our support section that would really Im improve it the way, over the way it is now. So those are examples of, of things we could do for site builders. In terms of developers, um, the big thing is porting Drupal.org to Drupal 7. And you're like, why is that a developer improvement? Why do I care, right? Um, so one of the things that we're coupling with this uh, port, or this is the current plan, again, this is all in flux, I'm talking to people, I was literally in boffs up until this very moment talking to people. Um, but one of the things we want to do when we port Drupal Auto to Drupal 7 is uh, basically Drupal commerceify the project module, meaning build the functionality we want out of project module, but build it on modern tools, views, rules, organic groups, all the stuff that we all use in our regular projects and we know how to work with, as opposed to this uh, is keratin in the room? Crap. Okay, don't listen for it. As opposed to this kind of cruffed up thing that we've sort of been like, you know, carrying forward since about 2003, and although some other people use it for all intents and purposes, it's a Drupal.org custom module. I mean, honestly. Um, we've made several attempts in the past to sort of, you know, do improvements to it to make it more generalizable. For example, the issue queue listings all being powered by views. And that's all great improvements, but it clearly isn't enough because people just don't know how to deal with the code in there. Um, and so that's, that's a major thing. And when we do that re-architecture, that opens up the door for all kinds of stuff, like activity streams, like um, the ability to intersperse commits with um, you know, issue queue comments, the ability to uh, treat project pages as organic groups so you could do like, you know, per project news feeds and per project documentation or, you know, potentially, I don't know. I'm hand waving a little bit here, okay? Because I haven't run this past the docs team at all, but, but these are the types of things that we could do and I think it's really empowering. The other thing that it does, and this is huge, is it moves our collaboration stack to the version of Drupal that every one of us is using so that it's much easier as a contributor who wants to make Drupal at awesome to just jump in. So that's the big thing. Small things, backlink commits and issues. There's a couple of ways we could do that. One of them involves a bunch of Git improvements. One of them just basically is very minor, but it would still be better than nothing. Stuff like that really helps when like, <clears throat> Certain core maintainers sometimes forget to uh, do git apply hyphen hyphen index when we're committing patches and so forget to add files and then break test bot and then I get emailed on a weekend and I go in and anyway, certain core developers or committers do that. We won't name names. So um, that happens. So stuff like that, um, also like, you know, little usability improvements to the follow link. For example, just the other week, uh, Derek Wright rolled out a little counter so you can see how many people are following an issue, which now makes me just want to know, well, who are they? So maybe that'll be the next thing we do, but small <laughs> things like that, right? Like little things that are quick wins that we can just bang out. And then in terms of community things, Jennifer Hodgson has been amazing at just rolling out additional improvements to api.drupal.org. Like that's her baby. She's just made it amazing. And so we'll keep rolling out more of those. Um, I know Jay Thorson and some other folks are working on automation for the project application process. Uh, Jay Thorson, Klausi, and probably some other folks um, to try and get our, uh, you know, contribution process around contributed modules, um, you know, more streamlined so people aren't waiting quite so long for reviews and stuff like that. So those are examples of community things that might be bubbling up from the, you know, grassroots that we could help support with this team. And in terms of sponsors, you don't get any big things, sorry. Um, but you get some small things, you know, some stuff like hosting, better hosting pages, a better marketplace. We have this marketplace previous been sitting there forever and just really just needs to get launched already. Um, lets you like find businesses by like sector and location or a couple of other simple things, you know, like, because right now the best place to go for that information is aquia.com and I don't need to tell you how stupid of a situation that is, so, you know. Um, better job boards, the ability to do, you know, like, 
Groups.Drupal.org is kind of fine, you know, but jobs get posted into groups that have nothing to do with anything, and it's really hard to tell what jobs are open versus closed and stuff like that. So a better job board, those kinds of things. And then some community bubble up things that are happening is like people are working on like things like a better books listing, better case study section. So um, it's really important for me to say here that as part of these improvements, what we're going to try and do is monetize certain aspects of Drupal.org a little bit. Okay, and that sounds scary. What I don't mean by that is putting frigging ads on the issue queue pages. What I do mean though is that maybe on the jobs listing, a company pays us a couple of grand to get a featured listing. Or um, maybe on the distributions listing page, somebody can pay a couple of grand to get their little featured distribution. The advertising would be like very clear that it's advertising, but we need some way to supplement the income that we get from DrupalCon. Because if you look at our, at the Drupal, I mean there's little, annual reports, you can look at this yourself. Our income comes like 94% or something from DrupalCon, which means we have to have high ticket prices, which means we have to charge high sponsor prices, all of this kind of stuff. And we would like to decouple those two things so that we're not dependent on a conference to fund our nonprofit. So, you know, just so you know, people like Jacob Redding and people like that are going to be in the issue queues and they're going to be trying to stay out of your face when you're like collaborating on the thing. But for certain aspects of the site, they're going to want to find some way to help supplement the funds that the Drupal Association raises. So if anybody has ideas on that, please talk to me, please talk to Jacob Redding, because we fundamentally do not want to disrupt our collaborating community. That's absolutely paramount. But yet we need to figure something out. Because right now, like, you know, our hosting page probably could be netting us 500k a year, which would completely pay for this team. But we, you know, it, it's been traditionally really difficult because of all the processes that are in place and stuff like that. So please help us help you because we really want to make Drupal.org awesome, but we have a lot of fundraising to do to get there. So to summarize, here's our 2012 timeline. So my goal for Q1 or Denver was basically to bootstrap the team. So you know, get an intern hired, get Neil Drum off of other stuff and onto Drupal.org, um, and then to set up some basic community processes that we'll go through in a sec. Um, Q2, we're holding a Drupal.org port, Drupal.org to Drupal 7 sprint in Portland at the OSL offices April 23rd to 27th. Um, and if you want to go to that, please email me, drupal at webchick.net, um, and I will try and work something out. We can't obviously have like 100 people there because that would be insane. Um, but we want to try and fly all of the main, you know, main lead people in, and we want to tr try and fly in a bunch of people who are like, hey, I'm smart, give me some stuff to do, and I can go do it. So if you live in Portland or you can come to Portland, and that sounds fun to you, please contact me because we'd love to have you. Um, so in terms of staffing, probably what's going to happen in Q2 is it's mostly going to be contractors. So we're probably going to end up paying somebody to care about Git, to care about TestBot, to care about Solar and some of these other things, because Internally within the DA, meaning Neil Drum, we don't have that knowledge right now. And so we have to like somehow supplement this. So we're probably going to be hiring some contractors on a short-term basis to help us get through the Drupal 7 upgrade. Um, and then of course, incorporating community improvements is the number one thing. So when we have community improvements, we want to make sure that they're looked at quickly. They might, they might have to wait until after the Drupal 7 upgrade. We don't know. It depends what they are. But we'll definitely like you know, give you guys an expectation that like, okay, that's awesome, we will totally look at that and this is the date that we will look at it and stuff like that. By quarter three, Munich, I wanna have the Drupal 7 port done. Wouldn't that be nice? Yay! <laughs> and with that, I'd also like to have project ratings and reviews done. And at that point, probably a couple weeks before Munich, I wanna reassess the community priorities. Um, because the, the way I did it was very like janky. It was like one of those 2 a.m. Oh my God, I gotta figure this out. I know, I'll do ideal scale. And then it does flashy messages and I don't know. So, like, so, you know, reassessing the community of priorities. We have a bit of time to think between now and then about what that process would look like. Um, and then by Q4, we should be able to increase our staff headcount because it'll be, we'll be on the other side of Munich. Um, we'll have additional funds by that time, hopefully. Um, and then we'll be able to look at our, you know, reassess community priorities. We'll be able to figure out what is the staffing thing that makes sense there, and then we'll add to the team. Cool? Is that okay? Okay. All right. All right. So the important thing is that we can't do any of this without your help. Okay. Because, uh, like I just outlined, I have basically one and a half people to work on Drupal.org for the next 
you know, a couple of months plus some contractors. So, and even if we had a team of like 50 people, we still couldn't do all of the things on this list. Like we really need the community to help us help make Drupal.org awesome. So, um, we've set up a, a process called Office Hours, Drupal.org Office Hours, which I should probably rename because it's a terrible name, but that's what it was called on the wiki page when I took the screenshot. Yeah, we can bike shed it later. Let's do bike shed tomorrow, noon, we'll ask, no, I'm just kidding. Um, what this is, is essentially uh, dedicated time on IRC if you come to Drupal-infrastructure. Come to us, tell us what you're working on. Um, and then, you know, I'll work with Neil until we get a project coordinator. Please, for the love of God, apply for the project coordinator position. But anyway, until then, talk to me and Neil, um, and we'll try and figure out how to get it slotted in uh, so it gets deployed in a timely manner. Um, this, right below that, is our hit list for the current week. So we're going to start documenting every week what we're working on after, you know, at the end of that meeting. So it's like, this week, you know, this was for last week, you know, we worked on the Drupal.org case studies page, we worked on porting, you know, blue cheese to groups at Drupal.org, all this kind of stuff, so that we can credit the people who helped with that, and so we can basically copy and paste this into our newsletter and let everybody know what we're working on and what their money is doing on our site. So please, get a sandbox, yay, and let's make Drupal.org rock. Woo! So I just want to say two other things. One, I really have to say thanks to Acquia because this stuff just kind of came up and I kind of had to drop everything else I was working on and kind of focus on this and they were very understanding about that. So I really appreciate that. And also, please come to our board meeting. So the Drupal Association is doing um, its first public board meeting in room 602 right after the closing plenary. So if you want to watch governance take effect, it's probably going to be kind of a train wreck because we've never actually done a public board meeting before, but it's in the interest of increased transparency. Uh, we really want the community to come get involved in the DA and see what we do. So if that sounds interesting to you, after the closing thing, come to room 602. And now, I will take any questions. Go ahead and go to the mic, mic please. <laughs> Hello, Randy. Hello, Angie. Fantastic work. Beautiful features. Great progress. And I'd like to give you a hand for making the process happen since, you and Neil, I know, but making the process happen since Chicago, because that's, that greased the wheels. So thanks, oh, thanks. for doing that. It's just, I, I think that's awesome, and it broke the log jam, and it's just absolutely fantastic. And I, I have to tell you, everybody, it does work. Yes, it's in an obscure place, and you have to find it, but I have gotten actually things on Drupal.org myself, you know? And yeah. I know how to do it, and I'll tell you how to do it if you don't know, but it works. It, it's not trivial, but it, it works. It can be done, which that hope, I never had that hope before at all. <laughs> okay, so. Can my, I put instiller of hope on my business card? Yeah, oh, nice. okay. you can, please do. <laughs> all the things I saw there are like features, they're like, Techie feature, great, great stuff. Every single one of them is great. Mm -hmm. But to me, the big thing about Drupal.org that is looming is the, uh, the, the content and the IA. And even though we work on those from time to time, there's not an owner of Drupal.org that says, this is what Drupal.org should become. This is, it, this is a site builder or a or a webmaster, you know, a, a, a thinker, an, an IA thinker who is always pushing it to where it ought to be. And to me, that's a huge thing that is not this techie feature and that techie feature. And I would love to see us actually have a visionary owner of Drupal.org pushing it to where it could serve its users better. That's a great comment. That's a great comment, yeah. So on that note, so my little cute little plan that I banged out, whatever, um, only went through the end of this year, um, just for like staffing kind of things. And again, if we raise a crap ton of more money, I am happy to hire people sooner. So help, talk to your businesses, donate to Drupal.org, become a member, all of that fun stuff. Um, so in the longer term plans, however, we kind of have to bootstrap this team and find out how they work with the infrastructure team and how not to step on their toes. So there's some stuff there. We want to try and get those things out. We also want to bang out some community features because honestly, the DA has an awful lot of credibility to recoup. 
Like, we've done some great things. We've done the Drupal.org redesign, we've done the Git migration, some of this other stuff, but it's very ad hoc and it's very like big bang and then we go away and we don't touch it again for several months. So in my opinion, based on talking to people, the DA has a lot of credibility to build before I think most members of the infrastructure team would be comfortable with the DA saying, and now we own Drupal.org too. You know what I mean? I think we need a little bit of time to work that up. And so that's what the next six months is about. However... Just so, so I wasn't saying that that was the DA's responsibility. Sure. That's one way to do it. Yep. But um, that's not at all what I was saying. I was saying that we should make that a priority one way or another. I agree. So in the DA's roadmap for next year, after we get like kind of this initial team built out, we actually do want to think about staffing that position, a product owner for Drupal.org, who would be doing things like analyzing Google Analytics logs, figuring out where people are coming from, figuring out, oh, if we make these two cosmetic tweaks to this page, did that move our traffic up or down from the how to contribute page? Would be doing things like, um, you know, basically doing what I've been doing for the past month, which is talking to a bunch of people and figuring out their priorities and stuff like that, and would actually own the vision around it. You're right, it doesn't necessarily have to be the Drupal Association. The DA, in my opinion, is probably the best suited organization to do that at the moment. Um, and I know no one on the current infrastructure team that I talk to anyway has any desire to own that role that I've seen. And it is a role that really could use full-time attention. It's not something you can sort of do in nights and weekends. It really needs a full-time thing. So, so that is in the roadmap, and I agree it's critically important. I think for, and I could be wrong about this, but I think for the credibility of the, our organization, we need to show the community that we can get some shit done before we start saying, and now give us even more money so we can hire more people. Does that make sense? You, you may not agree. And I don't know that he, I even agree with myself, but that's the current thinking about it. <laughs> but basically, let's have these discussions again in Munich, because I think that that would be a time when we will know one way or the other whether this team was effective for the last six months, and we'll have a lot better opportunity to discuss those kinds of things. Cool? Hey, Laura. Hey. So um, I have a comment, and it's really not a but, but an and, because I cannot disagree with anything you presented here. Um, I uh, may not be the typical uh, Drupal.org user because I'm a, I'm a site maintainer, I'm a GDO moderator, I I'm sort of have my fingers in a lot of pies, but I, I was out of pocket for a few months, the last few months, and when I started to reintegrate, I realized to a grand scale how balkanized and hard to find it is uh, information that's relevant to me. Mm -hmm. There's the huge volume of information, and I think everybody can agree that when you just sort of browse around Drupal, it's like you could just go to sea and you never find anything for days. Yep. It's Solar has been a great thing for finding things relevant when you're actually searching for something. Like uh, you get your right keywords and you drill in, and you can find answers very quickly. And it's it's made Drupal's internal search. Uh, uh, often better than Google for finding answers. But when it comes to discovering new conversations and whatnot, one of the big problems I have is that the only way I can find out about them is through Twitter mm -hmm. or Facebook or someone mentions it you know, in a meeting or a discussion or something like that. Um, and, it, and that's because we d haven't really leveraged the community kind of tools, the community crowdsourcing tools that are available either in terms of concept or actual modular solutions uh, that can help us find relevant things. For example, being able to follow certain people and then be able to have the content that they're following highlighted. So I, you know, I have a group of people that I'm always interested in what they have to say. And you know, sometimes they're epic posts like WebChick's posts or Larry Garfield's posts. And sometimes they're little short things and little observations that are just like gems. And then, and then uh, what they're seeing is of interest to me. Mm -hmm. And I can't just follow them through my dashboard or anything. And, and being able to bring visibility to these things can help all of us because I think there are people who work in Drupal in education or in libraries or whatever they're, whatever they're working on. They have their group and they're discovering things and being able to leverage and expose to each other what we're seeing is kind of like what Facebook is doing and things like that or, or Google Plus. Um, and bringing those tools can actually help this hierarchical effort of trying to drive it from the top with project owners and leads and whatnot with a little more crowdsource uh, 
effort because we're, we're kind of all stuck in our own issue queues. Yep. And we can follow our issues, but if I don't know about the issue, there's no way for me to discover it unless you know someone mentions it in IRC and I happen to be looking in that you know 10 second span before it's scrolled out of the window. So yeah, um, that's that's that's, my... that's a really good point. Um, I just want to point out uh, the Prairie Group did a bunch of work on designs for something called topic pages. Let's see if I can see that. Make that bigger. Mm -hmm kind of bigger. Um, oh, you can't even see that. Ha ha. Okay, hold on one sec. Uh, turn on me. <laughs> this wonderful thing you can't even see. Yeah. Um, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of hard to see, but essentially, like, you know, there'd be tags and feeds of stuff that you could follow, and you could follow people in the activity. So, like, this would be the user experience topic page. I'm going to pull in commits, users, group posts, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff in to sort of one centralized view so that you, as Laura, you might be interested in following theming improvements, both across Drupal core, but also cool contributed projects and all this kind of stuff. So a means of bubbling up that sort of stuff, um, either in an automated fashion or potentially using social tools like that. This is exactly the kind of thing that I want us to work on once we're past the Drupal 7 like gauntlet, because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me and I'm happy to argue about this, but there's a lot here in this little mock-up. There's a lot here. And to me, it makes more sense to get the stupid, boring, plumbing crap that everyone agrees we have to do out of the way first and so that we can staff up our team and then we can start attacking stuff like this because I agree, this would be amazing. Yeah, However, if somebody wants to drive this through the community initiatives process, I would love to support you in that as well. Um, and then it just becomes a matter of slotting it in with everything else going on. But um, so totally agree with that. And I'm hoping by the end of the year, so my plan only goes out to Munich, I'm hoping by the end of the year we have some stuff like this to, to, to show people that can help with the content curation, that can help with the finding what the heck is going on in Drupal.org. Because I agree, it would be great not to have to rely on proprietary closed platforms for that information. Yeah, and it's also discovering this, you know, getting a yeah. in a session. It's a whole thing. So that's thing. in the Prairie Initiative group? Prairie Initiative, yeah. Okay. That's, that's, they're working on things like months. this, all kinds of like big things to help make collaboration smoother. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Lynn for the recording, uh, Lynn Clark. Um, and I wanted to know a little bit more about the community initiative. I'm sorry if I missed it in what you're talking about in your roadmap, but I know that the Drupal Association and the town hall, you talked about the office hours where uh, people would be in IRC once a week to talk with people who are kind of leading their own scratch your own in community initiative. Yep. And I'm wondering, is that, are we talking that starting six months from now, or is that gonna be going on while you're ramping up? That's going on starting not this Monday, because it's the day after DrupalCon <laughs> and Neil Drum needs a day of rest, but literally this is gonna start March 27th. Okay, I'm sorry if I missed that announcement. Uh, no, it, I didn't really announce it very well. So okay. thanks for asking. So this <laughs> is the community initiatives page for Drupal.org which you can get to, which is not very obvious, but you can get to it from your dashboard, community initiatives, and then oh. it's under here. Oh, cool. Oops, not core, that's, that's my other hat, this one. Uh, and so this is our office hours blurb. So normally it will be Mondays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific. However, we're, we're, skip, like, we're declaring this Monday a holiday uh -huh. <laughs> because Neil Drum needs a break and we're gonna move it to Tuesday instead. But okay. thereafter, it's gonna be Monday, and this is right after the Drupal Association staff meeting, uh -huh. so they'll have an idea of what the DA's priorities are, then we'll get the community priorities, and then what we're gonna do is update this list here to figure out what are the priorities for this week. And I'm just gonna keep stacking stuff on top of each other, moving it to, I don't know. But it basically, so that anyone at any point in time, even if they miss that meeting, can come in and say, oh, okay, this is what's on for the week, and then uh -huh. can try and get their thing slotted in too. But the key thing about uh, having dedicated time on, on the infrastructure channel is because like, I, I consider myself reasonably active in the Drupal community. <laughs> Okay, and I cannot keep on track of what everybody's wearing. I mean, it's impossible. So this was a way to like, be, let it be bottom up. Let people tell us what they're working on so that I don't have to literally follow 17 different issue cues to right. find out about it. So if you, I know you're very interested in like uh, the RDF tagging stuff and being able to pull in external resources to Drupal.org. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to get a sandbox for that and you wanted to start working on that with a team of people, um, then yes, that would absolutely be the thing. If you can okay. come to core office hour, or sorry, wrong hat. Drupal.org office hours, and you could bring that up, or else, you know, just ping me, it's fine. Okay. Um, you know, that'll be the process. And then it might be that that thing is 
too big to handle this week, but essentially what we would be there for then is like, you say, I need a sandbox, we get you a sandbox. And then you work and work and work and work for a while. Yeah. And then you say, oh, I'm this far, but I have a question about a performance aspect of this. And so we you know, find you somebody to help you with that. Okay. So it would be more in an unblocking capacity and less of a development capacity. Right. Because the development capacity, I really want to reserve for those things that only the Drupal Association can do. Yeah, and if that's, that makes sense. I'm totally, I, I'm 100% with that. Cool. Um, one question I do have is more about process. Um, yeah. How can people who are doing these community initiatives, because I've already built out prototype modules and everything, I've done a lot of the development work, the thing that terrifies me is the idea of bringing this into the uh, infrastructure process and having all of my energy totally sucked out by like trying to figure out who I need to get permission for, for what, or yeah. who, whose buy-in I need to get. Right. Um, and, or you know, going a couple of months into the process and then realizing that somebody who has not seen it at all really needed to see it before I started. Yep. So is there going to be like a way to define who needs to sign off on what decisions? Yeah, I, I imagine we're going to handle that through office hours as well. So depending okay. on what it is, the answer is it depends, right? Okay. Who needs to look at it really does depend on that gigantic org chart, at least in the short term until we get in institutional knowledge on how everything works. Okay. So what I would say is, again, come to office hours and you can say the specific thing I'm working on is X and then we, the infrastructure team, now wearing my infrastructure hat, which is like, it has a propeller on it. But anyway, so uh, we can say, oh, for that, we need to ping kills first before you even get started because okay. he's going to have a lot to say about that or Narayan. We might screw it up. I'm just going to put that out there because mm -hmm. it is very complex. And I still, even though I've been spending a lot of time on this for the past year and a half, I still don't always know who to talk to. Mm -hmm. But between me and Neil and the other people active in the infrastructure, we should be able to figure it out. OK, cool. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Angie, hi. Um, could you speak briefly about whether mobile accessibility for things like the issue queues are part of the plan for the move to D7? Yes. Or if they're explicitly not part of the plan? So yes, the question is, um, are mobile uh, experiences for issue queues part of the D7 plan? And my answer is yes, I would like to do that because that's like a little nice carrot that I can put. I'm looking for carrots that I can stick onto the Drupal 7 upgrade that is like, it's not a whole lot of work outside of what we would have to do anyway, but it's like a nice feature to like encourage businesses to give us a crap ton of money. So, um, so yeah, so I, I, what I picture is, and whether it happens technically on Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 kind of remains to be seen, but, but yes, there's a, Bang House is working on porting blue cheese to uh, Omega, which gives us responsive layout kind of stuff. Um, we're gonna need some help on like how to actually do like, forms and stuff like that using the form API in a responsive way and, and that kind of stuff. But yes, that's one of the things I'd like to tack onto the carrot of a Drupal 7 upgrade. So not only the better collaboration tools, but also the mobile-friendly Drupal.org because it's going to be kind of embarrassing if we ship Drupal 8 with a like, yay, mobile first kind of thing. And then you go to Drupal.org and it's like three side scrolls <laughs> over, you know, it's kind of like, eh, you know hurts our credibility. But yeah, to answer your question, that's one of the things that I would personally lump under the Drupal 7 port, because we have to rewrite the theme anyway, so why not do it responsive? Awesome, thank you. Sure. So Laura just spurred a thought. Um, I, I, I don't, uh, this, this is just a follow on from what I had asked earlier about you know, having, a, having a leader, a, a thinker about IA and about uh, about the whole site building and, and content of Drupal.org. But, you know, like search is, a, is something that a person could own in the community. Yeah. And currently it's just like if somebody notices that the search doesn't work and they understand solar, they might work on it, right? right? But it's so important and it's one of the fundamental experiences. And every time I've had a problem, and I actually found a solar expert to tweak the problem, I've been happy forever after. Right. But nobody owns that. Right. And there might be pieces like solar that we could get somebody to actually own that would take away that whole, like, oh, we have to hire somebody to solve uh, that yeah, problem. I agree. You know? Yeah, I agree. And search, I don't know, what there, there might be other things besides search, but I'll bet you that we have one solar expert in our community who would just take it on and fix it when it was broken and have a plan for it. So. That's good feedback. Um, yeah, I mean, something I'd like to do, so, so something like that really needs to be done um, with in, in respect of and in consideration of the people who actually own, own the thing, meaning they probably don't own it, but they did the work on it initially. So something like that, I wouldn't be comfortable unless I talked to Damian first and I said, hey, Damian, how do you feel about us like 
you know, getting someone else in there to help support solar since you're busy making commerce guys amazing, you know. And, uh, but, but yeah, assuming that that was cool. Do you have thoughts on like how best to recruit when we find an opening like that and the infrastructure leads like, yes, please go for it? Because I haven't figured that out. I mean, I guess we can mention it during Drupal.org office hours and maybe pull in a volunteer that way. But, you know, the bottom line is if you want to help Drupal.org, come to office hours. We'll figure out something for you to do. But just patience, please, because we're still getting our feet under us and it might take us a month or so to kind of really get rolling. So, but good feedback. Hey, Gabor. Hey. So I've, I've heard that Drupal people work on some new version of Drupal core, which might be called Drupal 8 or the new Drupal or depending on yeah, the Yeah, I heard it kind of sucks and, yeah. Is, the, is it like somewhere fit in the plan that like maybe more people would hear about it if they go to Drupal.org and like learn something about it, like improving the visibility of that so they know. Oh, did, that? Did that appear in the priority anywhere? Yeah, or? I would totally like, I, like I would like to run that as a community initiative because okay. it's stupid that you come to Drupal.org and you have no idea that we're working on Drupal 8 or that we're working on this for that matter. So yeah, I, I would like to own that as a community initiative to try and get better call to actions on different pages. And I don't know what that looks like. If you're a designer and you'd like to help me figure out what that looks like, I'd love to talk to you. But, but I don't feel like Neil Drum needs to spend his time working on that because that's something that you know, three or four of us could get together tomorrow and just bang out. So that's the kind of thing, but that's exactly the kind of thing that I think we should do through community initiatives for now until we have the product owner and the UX design lead and then they would sort of head up those kinds of things. Okay. Okay, thanks. Hey, Damien McKenna hey. for the logs. Um, so obviously there's the reality that managing and running Drupal.org takes um, a lot of investment and a lot of ongoing costs both just managing it and trying to do more with it. Um, where do you find or where do you see the balance of needing to both bring in the income for that but also not running into perception of monetizing the community too much? Yeah. Um, it has been a problem in some communities where basically you get the free um, GPL core uh, main CMS part, but then to do anything really decent with it, you have to buy everything. Oh, So yeah. yeah. Obviously not taking it to that extreme, but how do you find, or how do you see the, being able to balance that? Okay, that's a really great question. So what I mean by better monetize Drupal.org does not mean we have a for pay and a for free version of Drupal at all. Because for one thing, the DA does not control, operate, own anything, the software. We are only about the infrastructure, the supporting things. So we can tweak things on Drupal.org, and if we do the wrong tweak, the community can say, screw you, we're now RuPaul.org, and they can move, you know, so. Um, and that's fine, that's wonderful. So in terms of what I mean by monetization, what I mean is stuff like this. So on the hosting page, which you only go to if you want hosting, right, that there's little banners here and we like make a big deal out of how these people support the Drupal community, right? And then there's different categories, like you can go to like, you know, enterprise and manage your platform as a service, this kind of thing. And then charging people to have their logo on this listing. That's what I mean. I mean stuff like that where it's very targeted, very specific, and it's only to people who are actually looking for that information. And it helps them find other things, but it also like makes the DA a little bit of money. By the way, if anybody is in the market for a web host, if, if you like any of the hosts listed in any of these pages and you click on the link, the DA gets a kickback. So that would be awesome if you could buy your hosting through here. Um, if you're on a crappy host like DreamHost, <coughs> for example. So. Um, SSH passwords in plain text. Ugh. Anyway, so yeah, um, that kind of thing. And a similar thing with the marketplace preview, um, which you can see right here. You know, we have little listings here and stuff like that, which is currently in alphabetical order, which is kind of a terrible way to list things because guess who's near the top? And you know, guess who isn't near the top and stuff like that. So, you know, being able to like, allow featured listings that are very clearly marked as featured, similar to how Google search results will like, this is an ad, if you want to click it, click it. Not saying like we support these people and we can vouch for them or something, but just saying like this is an ad. So that's the kind of things we're generally talking about. And I don't totally know how it will work, you know, because we're still trying to figure it out. And again, I'm very open to ideas on how we could stick things on the site that does not piss you all off. I really would love to know that. Um, but in general, that's the kind of things we're talking about. We're talking about sections of the site targeted specifically at businesses and customers looking for businesses, not anything touching where the community collaborates and definitely not touching the software in any way. 
Okay. How about things like chip in for issues or projects or whatnot? You know, that's another one of those things we can probably look at after Munich. Um, but I was surprised by the, like, this is this site, by the way. Um, I was really shocked by how contentious that was. Like, I, overall, it ended up ranking pretty high in terms of ideas, but like, if you read the discussion, it's like there are people on polar opposites of that issue. Either it's a great idea, we should totally have donation infrastructure, or this will destroy our community. That's pretty much the delta there. So uh, speaking as the DA, I have no interest in getting involved in an issue like that and trying to arbitrate something the community does not have consensus around at all. What I want to do, how I want to spend the DA's money, is around things that there is near universal consensus need to happen. Now, maybe eventually this issue will show up. Where is it? There's a lot of great ideas here, by the way. This one here, yeah. So it is definitely in the top 10. Doesn't mean it's never going to happen, but it does mean like how the, the best way for something like this to happen would be for someone to drive it through the community initiative process. Because if they did that, and there was enough consensus around it to get it to RTBC, then it's like, oh, we're just gonna do what the community was doing anyway. As opposed to the DA from the top down saying, this is a direction we're taking for Drupal.org. It totally changes the conversation, if Thank that you. makes sense. So, I am not really sure where I stand on this issue. However, the cool thing about this little stupid site with the flashy messages, is that you can actually see who agreed and who disagreed on these things. So if, well this is good though, right? Because if you're someone who wants to see that happen, here's the list of people that you get a sandbox site with, okay? And you start hacking on it and you start like showing it to people and you say, what do you think of this? And they go, ah, and you go, okay, well, well, what do you think of that, you know? And hopefully over time we would come to consensus and say, okay, we reached consensus that this little baby step is a really good step in the right direction and it doesn't overly monetize Drupal.org or whatever it ends up being. But if any of the things on these lists are stuff that you feel passionate about, you know, that's your team. Go find them, go connect with them, come to office hours, get a sandbox, and let's get rocking on some awesome features. Yes. Hey, Angie. I'm Sean DeArmond. Um, is there going to be a group working during the sprints tomorrow on Drupal.org and where and when? Right. Um, there's at least several sprints happening on Drupal.org. Um, Help, that one. I can never find that link. Um, so these are some of the sprints happening. These are like the featured sprints, meaning people that we sort of flew in special, or not flew in special, sorry. We gave free tickets to attend. Um, so one of the things happening is a, to Randy's point, a content improvement sprint for Drupal.org led by Lisa Rex, so that's really great. Um, I know the Git folks are going to be getting, getting together. Ah! Okay, sorry. Um, to be talking about uh, future improvements for the Git uh, structure stuff, whether we do per issue repositories, whether we do, you know, better sandbox integration or some mixture of both, whatever. There was a boff about that today where we talked for like an hour, but I think tomorrow the intent is to expand that conversation. The you know, test spot folks are getting together, all kinds of people. Do you know where most of these are? I noticed there's very few uh, locations listed there. Is there one place that all the sprints are happening tomorrow? Line. Excellent, thank you. Uh, there, that's where they're happening. Great, I didn't even know that. I was gonna come here and look really awkward, so. <laughs> I just wanted to add a plug um, related to the sprints and related to the Drupal.org work. There's a few features um, in the plan, which is on groups.drupal.org for the commons distribution of Drupal for Drupal 7 that overlap with some of the things that are in the idea scale list of features. And so um, I, would love to talk about how, you know, maybe we could just kind of like build those for commons and then put them on Drupal.org or something like that. Um, where's the link to find out more about that? Sure, groups, uh, it's the commons group and then there, the post is um, commons uh, Drupal 7 MVP user stories. Boop. And then un unfortunately that links to a Google Doc, but it's publicly viewable and uh, we're looking for feedback on that. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's sorry. the link. And I haven't had a chance, but I will post either tonight or tomorrow at the Sprint a link to the relevant um, Drupal.org issues that are related to the stories that are in the backlog there. Cool. So if you like groups.drupal.org and you want to make it more awesome, then go find Ezra in that room that we looked at before. Thanks. Hyatt, mineral room A through C. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I guess that's everything. And we should all head off to the closing plenary, which is somewhere, somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, thanks everyone for coming. and. Uh, yeah.